All right, we need more players in the Kahoot. Come on. You guys know how to do this, right? Do you guys do this in class? No? Oh. What, do they, what do they use to elicit feedback? Please don't tell me they don't get feedback. I guess I have no place for that. Okay, well, we're going to do Kahoot. So go to kahoot.it and we'll ask some questions in a little bit. Uh, someone remember the game number so as others come in, I can refer back to the game number because I'm going to tab over now to my slides. All right, so we're going to move very, very fast. So everybody pay close attention. I promise you won't be bored. I can't make that promise. You might be bored. But I'm going to do everything I can to prevent you from being bored and we're going to move really fast. 18 things you can do right now to, succeed, to succeed in business. And when I say, say succeed, what I really mean is you can make a lot of money, right? No? Okay. I'm just teasing. All right, let's go. Kahoot question number one. Oh, I said I was going to come back a little bit later. It's right now. All right, are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, what's your current major? Uh, it's supposed to have options. And there they are. And most of you have already answered, so I'm going to tab half of this. Uh, oh, wait, maybe there are more. Okay, good enough. This helps me kind of get an understanding of the room, helps me gauge your state, status, things like that a little bit so I can better understand. Okay, general. Hey, I'm a member of the general club. Go general. Uh, some accounting, uh, finance and accounting, no technology, marketing. Okay, so it's kind of interesting. This is good because there was zero technology. Let me tell you, that's going to be a big part of what I talk about today because it's extremely important. And I kind of, you know, no offense to those of you from the school, but I think that they're failing you in that there's no technology business degrees. And you'll kind of see why, and this will make a little bit of sense as we go through today. So, first thing, I'm just gonna tell you who I am real quick so you can tell, so you understand why you should trust me. I graduated in UVU, I couldn't even remember the year. It was sometime in the 2000s. Uh, I was working full time, going to school full time. I was one of those, I was, uh, when I transferred, I transferred from BYU to UVU, and back when I transferred, they didn't even know how to do that. It was really confusing to them. Um, now, it's, now it's very common. Um, I worked at uh, some big companies. I got my start though, working at the UVU newspaper and I was doing advertising, layout and design and then the customers were coming in saying, well what message do you think I should get? And I'm like, well the message you have is terrible, so let's work on this. So I started consulting people on advertising, got into advertising, worked at a Fortune 500 company, marketing agency and then TD Ameritrade company and I learned how business and technology work together. Uh, in 2006, I co-founded a, uh, a company called Learning Markets. I'll talk a little bit more about it later. I began consulting and now I manage a small consulting firm and we help uh, larger companies typically, uh, companies that have been purchased by private equity uh, investors, help them improve and grow to the next level, get to the next level of growth and I'll kind of show you that real quick. What we do is we bridge the gap between business and technology. This will all start to make sense. Here's an example of some of my customers. I won't bore you with that. But I'll show you this. I've been in, uh, traveling to Europe extensively. I made a trip to Poland. This is kind of interesting. This, is a, this happened on October 14th, so just a couple weeks ago. I was doing due diligence investigation. That means I was work meeting with this company and the company that was buying them sent me to meet with this company and said, tell me everything that's wrong with their business technology and, and with their business processes in sales and marketing. I made a recommendation. They bought the company for $3.3 billion. Another example, um, Ancestry.com, have you heard of that? Local company, everybody knows it, right? Um, Ancestry.com was bought by a company, a private equity firm. You'll notice the date up there in the upper left in 2012. And for how much? Okay, they were sold four years later. Look at the date, April 1st, 2016. For how much? 2.6 billion. What's the difference? A billion. Okay, and they only sold 80% of their interest, the private equity firm. Okay, these are big dollars that we're dealing with. Uh, no coincidence, actually it is a coincidence. I started working with Ancestry in, in about 2012 and my job was to help them get to a point where they were scalable to be able to grow to the point where they could be sold for another for a billion dollars in profit. Okay, so that's the kind of work that I do. Trust me, you can trust me. <laughs> okay, number one. So I said I'd give you eight, how many things were there? 18? Number one, plan to love what you do. Okay, this seems so simple but let me just tell you there, there is nothing in the world worse than being stuck in a job that you don't like. So plan to do something you love. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about how you can find those things, but um, do, who knows what golden handcuffs are? Tell me what golden handcuffs are. It's a job where the person is so great that you're locked into it and you, it's getting another job just seems kind of silly. 
Yeah, and it's a little bit more than that. It's more like um, you make enough money where you have a lifestyle that you want, but you can't quit the job because you'd have to give up the lifestyle that you want. You'd have to sell your house or you'd go broke. And so they've got you by golden handcuffs. You're making good money, but you can't escape, right? It's never been easier to avoid that. You can be smart and you can do things to avoid that. So plan to do something that you love and I'll help you and I'll talk about how we can get you there. Uh, Benjamin Franklin is one of my favorite guys. He said two things that I think are really important but they need to be put together. Number one, it's the working man who's the happy man. It's the idle man who's a miserable man. That's absolutely true. Number two though is content makes poor men rich. Discontent makes rich men poor. So the message is work hard but do something that makes you content and you'll never feel richer. I've made lots of money in my life and I've made little money in my life and I can tell you the best year of my life I made zero dollars and zero cents and it was a fantastic year. You can be content no matter what you're doing so just plan to do that. Plan to be content and find work that you're content with. Okay, oh Kahoot number two. We're going to ask this question real quick. I keep wanting to go touch the screen, that's not going to work. Okay, do you work? Uh, seven, who knows it? 971174. I realize your situation may not fit with these four choices. They only gave me the option to have four choices, so just choose the one which choose the one which best applies, right? Don't you love those questions? All right, uh, let's look at the answers here real quick. Okay, so we have 20 in business part-time, that's good. Five no's, uh, 14 in business full-time, yes, not in business. Okay, I love that, by the way. I love that you're working, and um, this helps me kind of frame the conversation. It's interesting that many of you are able to find part-time business work. That's good. So, number one, um, is or number two, sorry, is be a student of business. So that's tip number two. Remember, there are 18 things. Number two is be a student of business. So no offense to your professors or whomever, but you will not learn the things that you need to know to succeed in business in a classroom. How many of you learned a language in a training area and then went to a place and realized you did not learn anything? Okay, that's how business is with your education. I promise you that. You will learn, you will become educated, you will learn to speak the language of business and learn to, be, to, uh, to succeed in business after school. Um, you'll learn terminology that you're not familiar with. You'll have to learn entirely new language. Um, so to get there, uh, one of, some things you can do now. Listen to podcasts. How many of you enjoy podcasts? How many of you enjoy podcasts about business? Okay, I only can raise my hand about halfway, but I promise you if you listen to podcasts about business, you will absorb the language and the terminology and the culture of business by listening to that. It may be boring at first. My wife complains all the time when I put on business podcasts, but they're very, they can be very valuable to you and you can do that now. That's an advantage you have over any generation. You, they've never been able to engage in business the way that you can through podcasting. Uh, number four, read, read, read. Okay, read news articles. Uh, go follow people on Twitter who focus on business. Except Darren Ravelli's terrible. Focus on people who are putting uh, good business ideas out there or are linking to blogs about business and just read. Know who acquired who. Know when um, Amazon launches a new product for their cloud offering. Understand that and learn to follow it. You may not understand everything at first, but just keep with it and you'll start to pick this stuff up and you will be able to have intelligent conversations with the people who interview you. And that's very, very impressive to people like me who are interviewing people like you. Next thing is network. I know you hear a lot about this and there are classes for it, but I, I wanted to give you some ideas. UVU has networking opportunities with the CDC. That's not the Center for Disease Control. It's the Center for Develop, something Center for Development, something Development Center. Uh, anyway, Google UVU CDC and you'll find out what it means, but they do hold events. Um, I think I pulled these ones up here from the, um, uh, from the Small Business Development Center. These are free events. You see free there? You have no excuse not to go, right? Those are networking opportunities. Go on Twitter, follow people you like, locally or nationally, engage in the conversation, go to events. There's a series called Launch Up. Uh, you can Google that. Utah Tech Council holds events. You can engage now in business events and go, just go and listen if nothing else and I promise you will gain value from that and you'll be able to network with people. Okay, we're in, on to number six. Emulate and follow the right people. Who knows what hero worship is? Can anybody give me an example of hero worship? Okay, sure. What about a business example? Do any of you have hero worship? 
Okay, Steve Jobs is hero worshipped by so many people. I'm telling you to avoid hero worship. Now, hero worship is not the people who go and say, you know what, I want to emulate some of the things that he's done. They're the people who are consumed with just loving these business personalities. It's the celebrity of business, I call it. That will do you no good. I, I Just trust me. Look at people that you want to follow and be like and emulate, but don't get stuck in the worshiping and groveling at the feet of people who, you, who people, other people think are great. That's not productive in business. Number two is social success does not equal real success. Here's an example. I pulled this from a very well-known uh, Twitter person who I happen to know very well, who has lots of followers and he makes no money. He's living paycheck to paycheck. That the success in social, the number of social followers you have does not equate to success in the, in the real world. I mean, I don't mean to, I don't, I don't mean to belittle some certain people, but there's a very difference, there's a big difference between success in business and success in a social setting. Follow people who are successful in business, find them. I pulled this from a company in Utah and I contrast these things to say, would you rather have 480, 2,000 followers or would you rather make a nice income in a job that's comfortable and by the way these are just you know a, a sample of the jobs in this company in Utah okay so follow the right people emulate and uh, emulate the right people and then talk to people lots of successful people here locally that you can uh, get to know okay on the next few slides the next uh, numbers that we're gonna go through the goal of these is to get you out of the I'm looking for experience dilemma does anybody know what that might be what's the I'm looking for experience dilemma That's right. I want someone with more experience. Well, how am I going to get experience if you won't hire me, right? Oh, I'm supposed to invite people. You're welcome to join us for uh, lunch afterward. Just come up to the front and we'll come talk. You can, we'll talk to you. Okay. Um, we, we want you, I want you to get out of the experience dilemma because there's nothing worse than that. I'm going to talk about things you can do right now to help avoid that so that you have experience going into those interviews. Okay. I just put an example. They say we're looking for someone with more experience, but what they really mean is they want they don't want to have to train someone on how to use office app, uh, office applications. And by the way, that means using a computer other than a Mac. That's a big problem for for many of us. Uh, they want you to understand business technology, best practices, uh, the the way that things are done in a, from a business process standpoint basic business terminology, the culture of an office and org charts and the company structure, uh, and then applying strategy to actual plans. That's what they're really saying. So when someone says they don't, they're looking for someone with more experience, what they mean is they don't want to have to teach you those things. They want you to know those things so that you can hit the ground running and contribute to the organization. So I'm telling you right now, you can learn all of those things right now if you're willing to put in the time and the work. So that's what the next things are going to be about. All right, let's do Kahoot 3 and 4. Okay, time's up. Uh, okay, this is awesome. 30, uh, 30 of you, the majority of you say yes. That's very good. Uh, five say not yet. Six after working. Uh, yeah, business. Okay, good. So most of you kind of know. Some of you don't. That's okay. There are lots of areas of business. Uh, let's, let's do the next question and then I'll talk about it. Okay, so 25, so most of you say yes, uh, some of you about a similar number say no, maybe in, in this week. Okay, so you guys know what I'm talking about. So now let's talk about how you're going to get past that. Okay, number one, or number seven and eight. Seven is going to encompass all these. Number eight is go sell somewhere. How many of you do not want to go into sales? Okay, I'm raising my own hand. Still go sell somewhere. One of the most important things you can do in business is understand the mind of the customer. You will not learn that any faster than you do working in customer service or sales. Go sell somewhere. You'll learn a lot about yourself. You'll learn a lot about the, um, about the customer and the way the, the customer mind thinks. You'll learn about how money comes in through the front door of a business and you'll probably hate every minute of it if you don't want to sell. But that's okay because you will be learning while you're earning and that's the better portion of your education. Okay, so try it. Trust me. I keep saying trust me, that's never a good thing. Uh, so find an, office, uh, find an office job in a decent sized company even if it's, a, if it's an admin. Okay, one of the things you have to learn is office culture. You can't learn office culture by studying it externally. It's not, or it's, not, um, it's not anthropology. You have to kind of be in the culture. You can get an admin job and, and learn those things. Find an industry you have interest in. Go and tell them you'll work for free and you'll fetch coffee. If nothing else, you'll start to learn and understand how the office culture works. And if you're good, they'll hire you. Uh, 
learn the language, business, culture, and then I mentioned off work, uh, offer to work for free. Okay. First, see if you can get a paid job. Uh, number nine, learn and love business, technology, and data. Okay, how many of you went into business because you did not want to go into technology? Okay, a couple. That's good that most of you said no because technology is almost synonymous with, with business now. Now, I'm not talking about programming and being a, a code monkey, but I'm talking about the fact that tech, business is driven by technology. So you have to learn to love it. So tip number one, you have to put down the phone and pick up the mouse. Business technologies are not driven from the phone. As much as uh, companies talk about their mobile strategy and putting together um, mobile access to office applications, the real work gets done with the mouse, not with your phone. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail. You can be an entrepreneur today. Even if you're a fake entrepreneur, I'll tell you how you can be a fake entrepreneur and still learn those important skills that we talked about. Um, and part of this is learning the technology architecture. So here's an example. This is just the technology architecture. And when I say that, I mean the systems that are used and the data that's used by just a marketing department. How many of you are marketing majors or want to go into marketing in your general business? Okay, that's the discipline I came up through. These are just systems that uh, an enterprise uses in marketing, not to mention finance, operations, and other systems. Technology is interwoven into it. You have to learn this architecture. You have to understand all of the systems that are used and how they work together. When you get to the, the enterprise level, the full organization, you've got a lot more systems that are involved. You have, you have to learn this. And I'm telling you, you can learn it right now. And I'm not talking about learning it from a textbook and understanding how all the pe what the pieces are so that you could build this slide. I'm talking about you could actually use them. So when you go in and talk to companies, you can say, yeah, I have experience using Google Analytics or I have experience uh, building a, a power pivot uh, reporting model. Okay, let's do Kahoot number five. All right, we're good. Well. All right, well, we're not going to have, let's do this. Raise your hand if you knew what any of, those things, any of those things were. Okay, that's good. Raise your hand if none of them looked remotely familiar to you. Okay, it's, that's uh, maybe 60-40. We're going to talk about those and why this is important. I have this thing and I keep touching the computer. Okay, so here are some things you can do. Number one, build a budget model. Okay, no matter how small that budget is, you could take $15 and I know most of you spend $15 on coffee or on um, stuff from the vending machine. Take the money that you would spend on a date <laughs> and save that money and instead start a business with it. And it can be absolutely small. You can resell socks that you already own. You can come up with anything. It can be fake. But you can set up a, mo a budget model no matter how small. Set up a personal budget. Use Excel to do that. Download a template. Google it. You'll find the information that you want. Build a budget model and learn how to use Excel to do that. Understand what a P&L is. What's a P&L? Someone shout it out. Okay, profit and loss statement. Okay, profit and loss statement uh, you, you're welcome to join us for lunch as well. A profit and loss statement. You need to understand those. You need to know how they work. Again, Google profit and loss statement and you'll find templates for it. Uh, build one. Okay, set, second thing is set up a, a website with a content management system. How many of you have set up a website before with a content management system? CMS. Okay, we've got some hands. Uh, what was your experience like? Do you mind? Absolutely. Uh, you're welcome to join us for lunch as well. It's, it, content management systems is a technology that allows non-technical people like you and me to be able to put a, together a website without writing code. Okay, WordPress, um, there's the one that's on all the podcasts now and I can't remember. Uh, what's that? Squarespace. Squarespace is, yep, Squarespace is another one. It's a web-based one. You can learn these systems. Okay, marketing departments use these to build their websites, to build landing pages. So when you click on a link in AdWords or you click on a social media link, it takes you to a landing page. They're using content management systems to do that. You can go download a content management system or use an online one for free. Okay, we'll talk, I'll talk a little bit more detail into that. Next one is use a CRM system to manage customers. Okay, how many of you have used a CRM before in a job or something like that? Okay, raise your hand if it was Salesforce. Raise your hand if it was Sugar CRM. Microsoft, NetSuite, other, okay. So you can, add, you may not know this right now, but well, does anybody know how much Salesforce costs? If you wanted to go get Salesforce for your business, how much does it cost? Does anybody know? No? Uh, I mean, it probably costs 100, 100 and something dollars per user per month. Can you afford that? 
probably not. But you can get a free developer um, account to Salesforce for free. Free for free, right? You can go Google uh, Salesforce developer account. You can do it for free. You can learn how the CRM system works. You can configure forms. You can add and remove things from your form. You can do all of these things. I know you can because I can do them and I'm not an extremely technical person. Okay, you can experiment with those systems. Sugar CRM is open source, it's free. Microsoft might have an education price, I don't know. But they're very inexpensive. You will need to learn these systems and understand what they do to, to go into business. Next one, run low cost marketing campaigns and generate demand through, uh, send people to a lead form that you set up with your content management system. You can do this, I'll show you how, um, how many of you, well how many of you have ever used Google AdWords before? Okay, we've got a few hands. Is Google AdWords difficult to use? No, no, no. It's not difficult to use. Do you need to pay for a Google AdWords account? No, no, no. You can even get coupons. If you sign up for Google AdWords, they will send you cards in the mail for $100 of credit. Sign up for Google AdWords. Get the $100 credit in the mail. You'll get them an email too. Go use that $100 and just try stuff. See if you can, you can manage your costs. It's not gonna spiral out of control on you, but you can experiment with that and run low cost marketing campaigns. And by the way, I, didn't, I don't know that I made this clear at the beginning, but try, first come up with an idea. Try, try to actually start a business, come up with something that you think is manageable, but do something that is very low cost. Don't go invest a lot of money and try to raise capital from your grandparents to, to start a business when you've never done it before yet. Start with something that you think you could, I mean, there are, you can buy things online and resell them potentially, or maybe you have a roommate who doesn't go to class but whittles and you want to sell his, um, uh, tooth, toothpick whittled Obama busts online or something like that, right? You can find something to do. Uh, next one is create a content library. Does anybody know what a content library is? That sounds really daunting and big. Does anybody know? Anybody written content for online before? Okay, you in the back. Um, when I say content library, I'm talking about blog posts, white papers, um, uh, PowerPoint presentations, there's content that you can create that people will download. That You can take that content that you've created and if it's good enough, you can go to sites and say, hey, would you publish this content for me in exchange for a link at the bottom back to my website? Um, how many of you read Mashable? Is Mashable still hip? No. Okay, uh, what do you read? TechCrunch? No. Yeah, a little bit. Okay, well, whatever sites you read, they demand, they or they depend, excuse me, on content. They depend on content from contributors. You can become a contributor if you can learn to write good content. If you can become a contributor by writing good content, you can put a link to your website on the bottom and you can get traffic back to it. Um, it, it you, there, I built an entire business doing that and you can still do it today. And then you have all the social channels that we talked about. Uh, document business processes and flows. I don't care if your business process is go meet the roommate uh, with his, uh, his carvings, uh, get the ad campaign put together, direct people to the landing page. You can document these in flows and I'll show you that in a little bit but that's an important skill to have. Um, use a free bookkeeping system to manage your financials uh, or even use Excel. How many of you have used a free bookkeeping system? Anybody use QuickBooks? It's not free, but some people have used, maybe they have a free version. There are version, there are competitors to, Quick, to QuickBooks that are free. You can go set them up online. They can link to your Google account. You can pretend to run an entire business. Um, use analytics. How many of you have used Power Pivot before outside of the classroom? How many have used it inside the classroom? Okay, so again, <laughs> No offense to the teachers here, but that's a failure of your education to help you. Power Pivot is probably, of all these things on there, is one of the most important things you can do. You, can, you have Excel, I don't know if you have education pricing or you get it with the school or whatever, but you have Power Pivot. Power Pivot is a tool that allows you to analyze data. You don't have to have business data to analyze it. You can go Google some sort of, uh, if you're interested in sports, you can go to sports websites and download the stats, raw data into Excel, and you can build pivot tables on them. You don't have to take a class to teach you how to use Power Pivot. You can go to um, YouTube and, and watch videos and they will show you how to do this. You can download models of Power Pivot that you can then begin to interact with and learn how to use them. It's the ability to take data and look at it from multiple dimensions. What I mean by that is, let's say you're in a sales organization and you want to understand how many leads came in and how many of those leads were converted. But then you say, you know what, I see that those, this number of leads came in, this many were converted to sales, but I want to see that by representative, by sales rep. You add that dimension. Now I want to see it by territory. Now I want to see it by time of day. Now I want to see it by product line. 
Power Pivot is a tool that allows you to look at those things, look at data multidimensionally like that. It becomes a very, very important skill to have in business. Probably the most important. Okay, here's what it can start to look like. You have a Google Analytics account for free. You can monitor the traffic to your website. Even if it's ones and zeros in the number of visitors per day, you can learn to use those tools. You can um, use Google AdWords for low cost or free. Again, you get those cards in the mail for a $100 credit to sell your uh, roommate's wood shavings or whatever. Um, you can set up a hosting account. That's one thing you'll probably have to pay for. Bluehost is a local company. You can set up a hosting account for six bucks a month um, and then you can host a website on it. You can host a content management system on it. You can get AdWords credit from it. Those are, uh, and again, it's another business critical tool that you'll want to learn. WordPress is a content management system. There are others, Ju uh, Dr uh, Drupal, Joomla. They're, all, they're free if you have a hosting account. You can learn how to set them up, build a website. Uh, this is Excel. There's a budget template. I just Googled uh, Excel budget template, found that one. Took me about 10 seconds. Uh, and then here's another for, this is a power pivot uh, reporting model. You can learn to do these things and that's important. Now here's what, uh, oh one more, uh, here's Salesforce. I mentioned the developer edition is free. And here's FreshBooks. This is a um, uh, um, bookkeeping system. Now. You may look at that and say, well, yeah, but that, I mean, that's, that's kind of cool, but is that how a business really operates? And the answer is yes. These are all of the systems that a business would also use and you have access to them right now for free or low cost to learn them. Um, now, you couldn't put on your resume that you were CEO of fake business ABC company and you sold your roommate's wood carvings, right? Is that going to impress anybody? I mean, if you sold billions of them, yeah, I'd probably impress them, but most likely not, right? But what you can put on a resume is that you have a list of skills, which include using a content management system, experience with Salesforce CRM, not only using the system, but configuring on it. Uh, you can put in there that you have skill in Power Pivot and Excel P&Ls. Never say you're an Excel expert because that immediately tags you as someone who doesn't know a lot about Excel. Trust me. Uh, there it is again. Uh, you can say that you're a Google Analytics power user. You can put all of those skills on a resume and when you sit down with the future employer, it's no longer a conversation about, well, I haven't worked anywhere yet. It's, well, how did, well, okay, you have a lot of interesting skills. Now they'll, they'll probably ask, what company did you learn these at or where did you learn these skills? And you explain to them that, look, I've been, uh, I've been spending time with them on myself. I, I started a small business, but I know how to put together a Google AdWords campaign. I know how to configure Salesforce to show um, different fields to different rep, uh, sales, for, or sales reps. Those become extremely valuable skills that are marketable right now and things that you can do right now. Okay, let's go to Kahoot number six. Am I going too fast for you guys? I know I talk really fast. Oh, most of you had no. Okay, next one. Oh, that was seven. Well, where's question six? Well, we'll skip to seven, sorry. All right, let's see your answers. Okay. This question was of interest to me more than anybody else. Um, I think that you're optimistic, but that's good. Optimism is good. Um, but I, that was a, a curiosity question for me. I, I hire all the time and I'm always interested in what people think that they should make. Um, going back to the median salary, remember that median salary includes people who've been working for their entire lives. You know, if I were to guess, I think the 40 is probably right around where you'd expect to make in your first job in business. I would not expect to make 60. Um, but again, it depends on how smart you are and how skilled you are. And the goal of this conversation, again, is to push you from the blue down into, or maybe even push you from the red more likely into the blue and into the yellow. Okay, let's go back. Next one. Um, I mentioned power pivot is an important skill, probably the most important. Actually, this is probably the most important. That's why it got its own slide. Learn to convey ideas and strategy. I worked at a company. Uh, we had well, probably about 700 employees and I was the VP of marketing there. And I had, there were two VPs of marketing. We reported to the chief marketing officer and the other VP of marketing came to me one day and he said, I don't understand why all of your projects get green lighted and you get funding approval and I almost never do. And to me the answer was so obvious I had to think of a, a gentle way to break it to him but I said it's because you're a poor communicator. You're not able to take the ideas that you have and put them into a presentation format that the senior executive team can consume and understand so that they can understand what you're driving for and grant you the money. And this is a very, very important skill. Now, 
taking it back a, a little bit, before you begin asking or putting together presentations for proposals, the first thing you need to do is document business processes. I actually pulled this. This is an actual business process that I helped a customer document. This is for a channel partner strategy. But how many, oh, I know what it was. The previous question was, how many of you have ever documented a process using swim lanes? Raise your hand if you've ever done that. Okay, again, not to <laughs> blanket comment on higher education and business, but that's an important skill that you need to learn and you should learn in school. Understand what swim lanes are and understand how to build and read one of these. Again, the process doesn't have to be an actual business process. You could do the process of doing your hair in the morning and you could document it in swim lanes like this. Probably not the guys, that would be a very short chart. But it, you can do these kinds of things. Learn to document processes and learn to document business processes using swim lanes. Just real quick, the swim lanes, each of these swim lanes here represent a different technology system and then the, pro, the boxes are the action that the, or the, uh, the activity that's uh, done by the employee so the, or, or a customer. So the customer does something, it goes to an employee, the employee does things inside the system, the data ends up in a certain database. That's what that's conveying. These are very important in order to convey ideas in business, especially on technology. Um, uh, I'm, oh, let me go to the second one before I talk about this visual. Learn to represent data. Uh, Power Pivot allows you, or, or just Excel in general, learn how to share data sets in a visual way so that people can understand them. Um, go to the leading sports sites and look at, go to, um, go to, uh, oh now I can't remember, uh, 536, 586, what's that site called? You guys know what I'm talking about? Um, well, I'll, if you're interested, I'll, I'll email it to you, but there's, there are websites that take sports data and they visualize it. Go to um, domo.com or tableau.com and look and see, you can go into those sites for free and you can see how people have used these tools to show data and ex take data from raw data sets into something that's visual and something that you can take action on. That's, that's a very vital skill to have. Learn how to use PowerPoint and you learn how to use PowerPoint effectively. If you've been taught to use PowerPoint where you put a headline and then five sub bullet points, you're doing it wrong. PowerPoint needs to be engaging. If you have every slide with a headline and five bullet points, you are going to lose your audience immediately, says the guy who's just showed two slides in a row with a headline and a few bullet points. But you have to be able to convey, use PowerPoint in a way that you don't lose people, that you keep their attention, that's engaging, that shows visuals to represent things. So again, I pulled this from an actual client uh, work that we're doing right now. It's demonstrating the, what we call the conversion funnel. That's another one of those business terminology words you would want to understand if you're going into a job interview. But it tells how a, how a potential customer becomes a visit on the website, takes an action, becomes a lead, becomes an opportunity, becomes a sale, gets upsold. At what point do you measure what things? This is, this is representation. This is a visual representation of a process that helps people understand what it is. If you're trying to get more money to drive more traffic into the top of the funnel, you have to be able to visually represent that and show why you need more uh, visits into the top of the sales funnel. Oh, and the last one there was write, write, write. Spend time learning to write. I know not ever, I believe that writing is an innate skill. You're either good at it or you're not. But you can be not good at it and become serviceable. So spend time that it takes to write. Write about anything. Start a blog. Uh, write Twitter posts. Use actual punctuation. Um, do, do everything you can to learn to write because writing is, is, is a vital business skill and most people aren't good enough at it. We already did Kahoot number seven. Okay, uh, moving quickly so I can leave time for Q&A. The next one is avoid debt and save, save, save. So if you wanna be, how many of you want to be an entrepreneur? Okay, that's about what I expected. You ask people, how many of you wanna work in the same job for 40 years for the same person? Really no one raises their hand. Uh, 40 years ago, that's how it was. Today we all wanna be entrepreneurs. Okay, if you wanna be an entrepreneur, the best thing you can do for yourself is save money and avoid debt because you'll wake up one day, you'll go work for somebody else out of college, you'll learn a lot, you'll realize you have good ideas, you'll realize that all of your good ideas are making somebody else rich and you'll want to, you'll want to make money for yourself and you'll realize that you, to do that you have to start your own business and then you'll look at your list of living expenses and then you'll look at your debt and if you've got a high volume of both, you will not be able to make that jump to be an entrepreneur or you'll have to make extreme sacrifices or you'll have to borrow money from grandma which is something you just don't want to do, okay? Avoid debt and save and you can become an entrepreneur. I mentioned earlier that the best year of my life was the year I made, zero, I made no money. 
I had worked for a company, I had taken my bonus and my stock options and I had saved and I had a very low cost of living um, and far lower than my income. And I was able to leave that company, leave a, a job where most people thought I was crazy to leave and I was able to become an entrepreneur and do my own thing because I had saved and because I had uh, low, low cost of living and I was able to make no money. And when you have that amount of money saved and you have low debt and you don't have high living expenses, you have greater, you have peace of mind that comes from the ability to say, at any point during the day, if I hate my job, I can walk up and leave. And that's, that's more valuable than any other, than anything else, any money you can make from a company. Uh, the, I was just gonna mention the company I started was a company called Learning Markets and they're, they're still around today. You can check them out if you want. Okay. Uh, I'm going to finish and open it up to Q&A. So if you're interested in getting a copy of the presentation, please email my assistant and she will send you a copy of the presentation. Maybe they post it online somewhere, I don't know. If you have questions or are interested in talking or networking, you're welcome to email me anytime. I am always looking for young, smart, bright people who are interested in getting into business. Um, you're welcome to talk to me about that. If you have questions, whatever, I'm, I'm a fairly open book. Please uh, feel free to reach out. Okay, questions? So you talked about um, business podcasts. What, what yeah. are some uh, business podcasts you'd recommend for us to listen to? Um, I'll tell you what, e email me and I'll send, I'll send you a list of them. Um, the ones I tend to listen to are more like economics and uh, they, they tend to be a little bit too deep. They're not the things that you're gonna wanna learn, but I have a list of them that I used to listen to that I'll, I'll send to you. Oh, I've heard really good things about that. I've not yet listened to it, but I heard that. I know that the Twit Network, I can't remember what they're called, but there's a, there's a tech network called Twit, This Week in Tech, I think it's called, and they have a whole slew of podcasts that are, that are business focused that are good. But yeah, I, that's a good point. You probably want to start with the entrepreneurial ones. But again, I'm not encouraging you to listen to podcasts so you can become an entrepreneur right away. I encourage you to listen to podcasts so that you can start to absorb the language of business. It's kind of like um, getting in the car and listening to a Spanish radio station. If you can speak a little Spanish and you want to get better at it, listen and repeat. You know, same thing in, in a business with business and you can listen to those business podcasts. Okay. What about your uh, steady job helped you to become a better entrepreneur? Um, so let me, I'll give you some quick background. So I worked and went to school full time. I never went, I was never a full time student except my freshman year. And so I was constantly working. And so I had quite a few years of experience in the job, in the, in my field before I made the jump to become an entrepreneur. Um, so it's maybe a little bit different, but I'll, I'll tell you some of the things. Number one is I learned how business and technology are married. That's the most important skill I learned because no matter what you become an entrepreneur in, you will need technologies to drive your business. Um, number two is I learned how to interact with people and I learned how to um, negotiate. Those are very important skills if you want to become an entrepreneur. Number three is I learned about the budgeting process. I learned how to build a p and L. I, I didn't learn those things in school. I learned them on the job and I, I can distinctly remember someone saying, uh, what's your marketing p and look like? And I said, I don't know, I'll schedule a meeting. Or I said, well, it's, it's complicated, I'll schedule a meeting, we'll talk about it later. And I literally went to my computer, go Googled a p and model and was building one for this marketing campaign. Those are the types of things that I learned that prepared me to be an entrepreneur. So you talked about um, listening to podcasts and everything to get the language. Um, what are some other things we can do for an interview? Because when we were talking about some of those terms before, I didn't know what you were talking about. And then as we discussed them, like I realized I've done each and every one of those things. Um, what are some ways that we can get better into the business lingo, I guess? Uh, I can't say enough about just doing it. So you go and do all of those things. Start an online ad campaign. Build a website with a content management system. That you'll find that your ability to interact with your interviewee as a peer grows exponentially as you are engaged in those things. Right now, if you go talk to someone who's interviewing you, it's very clearly the employer and the potential employee and you become, you get to the point where you know enough about business where you start asking them questions and you interact with them more like a peer. Because you can go into an interview and say, well, tell me what CRM system, let's say you're gonna go into a vice president marketing uh, job or interview, or not vice president marketing, uh, mar a marketing coordinator or low level marketing employee at a bigger company. I'd say my first question would be, what CRM system do you use? What data do you collect on your, cu on your customer? How do, you do, uh, how do you do marketing segmentation? Do you have customer personas? 
All of these terminologies that you can learn by you know, just engaging yourself now will impress your employer and help you realize if that's, if that's a company you want to work for. Because if they don't have good answers for those, you probably don't want to work for that company. At the fear of uh, asking the same question twice, I'll try and spin it a little bit differently. Sure. Um, how do you find yourself uh, being, being where you are, looking back at where you came from, how do you find this versus that helped you in your negotiations during interviews with companies uh, with the expectation to use that company to just leverage yourself further along your own career goals? Um, well, so let me, let me say it this way. I honestly have only interviewed for jobs very, I, I was, my first job was kind of, it was waiting for me, someone had held it for me, so to speak. And so I, I, didn't, I haven't interviewed for a lot of jobs. I've always been the interviewer, not the interviewee. Um, but I can tell you that um, it, negotiating in a job interview is not the way you want to start. You don't negotiate in the job interview, you negotiate afterward. The, the job interview is really about gleaning information from the employer and letting them glean information from you. The negotiation happens after that. And so um, all of those, uh, I mean, I don't know how to answer your question in, a sh in 30 seconds or 10 seconds, but I would just say that the, the tool, the things that you learn in negotiating around business become valuable tools in negotiating your salary or negotiating a raise or a change in position. But in the long run, my feeling is if you're doing a good job, those things will come naturally. Yeah, so uh, any book that you would recommend us to start reading when we are like thinking about starting our own startup, I know, um, is there any recommendations that you will suggest? Um, yeah, lots of them. Uh, I'm trying to think of one that jumps to the top of my head. There's a book called Good to Great. It was written quite a while ago. That's a good one. Um, there's a book called... It's, a, it's about Google's uh, story. Uh, it's not as relevant anymore, but it, and it's really deep and a little bit technical, but it's good. I'll tell you the one not to read is The 4-Hour Workweek because most of that is uh, just designed to sell books, not designed to help you. So avoid you know, kind of these pie-in-the-sky dreams. Uh, success in business as an entrepreneur requires work. Now, I subscribe to the theory. I love the idea of 4-Hour Workweek, but don't start there. Start with uh, some of these business books. Again, if you have questions, I could go to my bookshelf, email me, and I'll go to my bookshelf and tell you the things that I've read or what others read. Um, and again, I, I, this sounds, this is more boring, but I reckon, recommend learning about economics. Read economics books and understand not just basic ep economics, but understand, and not really microeconomics, but understand the um, effect that macroeconomics has on business in general. Is that it? Thank you very yeah. much.